Well, hello friends. Welcome to another episode of Blossom's Been Bourbon. My name is Mark. I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions, and it's a pleasure to have you in my workroom. Um, so from time to time, we've alluded to color schemes. Uh, we talk about that often, actually, almost with every arrangement. And I told you that at some point we would do color theory and talk about some specific color schemes and how they kind of manifest themselves in flower arrangements. So today is going to be the day for that. Um, aren't you glad? And as a quick reminder, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. If you have been here before and if you're enjoying these videos and liking them, I hope that you'll remember to hit that little thumbs up and give us a like at the bottom of the screen. Um, also, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we're putting up something new for you to watch. Um, so in color theory, um, obviously, it, it ripples over very importantly to how a flower arrangement looks, to how it feels, um, all of those kind of aspects about flowers. The first color scheme that we're going to talk about today is monochromatic. Monochromatic is using one color. And one color you typically would think of as, I know I have a, a client who loves all white flower arrangements. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. I'm not gonna call you out by name, but you know. Um, we've finally gotten her over to the dark side a little bit so that she will order flower arrangements with some color in them. But she does love her all white arrangements. And I gotta admit that they really are beautiful. And when I think monochromatic, that's often what I think is one thing like white. But the arrangement that I'm working on right now is also monochromatic because this is all going to be shades and tones of pink, okay? Now, if you think about how colors are made, um, you take one of the primary colors, and in this case, red, because red is the foundation for pink, and then you add white and black to the red to get shades and tones of that color. So, in the truest sense of the word, we are doing monochromatic because this is only one color, but it is going to be shades and tones of that color. Um, I find that really interesting. It's something that, I don't know, sometimes more, um, people who are more newer to, to the flower world and to doing flowers um, find that a little more challenging, I think, to do those kind of arrangements. Um, Another element about this that makes these arrangements more interesting and visually appealing is the textures of the flowers that we're using. Um, that also is going to help with that interplay of um, the color or lack thereof. All right. So I'm just using some pretty garden things that we had. The peonies are local peonies, um, which are really just about gone for right now. In fact, we had to kind of struggle to make these work for today. Um, some snapdragons, I think these are probably Canadian snapdragons that came into us. Some Gerbers. I am also using that clear footed pedestal bowl that I've used before, which I absolutely loved. And the pillow from Holly Chapel. Um, I am including at the, at the bottom in the description of these videos um, a link to Amazon for some of these products. If you guys are interested, um, I do get a small commission if you make a purchase, but if you're interested in following um, and using some of the same materials that are um, items that we're using, they're going to be available to you. So you'll just have to check that out. All right. A little texture from Hypericum. Also a little bit of a blush pink to the Hypericum too. You'll notice that it's just barely blush on the end, which is just so beautiful. It's, it's really a great color. Um, Laura, great job Laura, was helping me out today, um, getting ready for uh, us to film these tonight. And uh, so she's helped me prepare a couple of other color schemes that we're gonna show you. I am kind of tucking this brighter pink down in because I want to keep the values of the pink a little bit lighter, but I think that the darker pinks, that richer, more hot pink, um, really does give it some depth. So I think having it low in the arrangement is, is a really good thing. I do love working with these pillows. You see I'm having to 
work to make sure that that stem placement is in there. But look at that, that guy is not going anywhere. I mean, that that is just really beautiful. I'm a huge fan. I've become a fan the more I've worked with them. So let me know in your comments, is there a, a color scheme that you like working with? A color scheme that inspires you? One that really does kind of make your heart sing, as it were, when you're working with flowers? Or do you just like them all? Tell me that, I'd love to know. A little bit more of that brighter pink, again, adding kind of a little bit of depth so that we have a nice range of shades of pink. This is also local Vinca, as in from the backyard. Just to kind of add a little bit of line movement to this arrangement. We are having the nicest weather lately. Jason, have you enjoyed the weather? It's just been ridiculous. <laughs> I get the silent thumbs up back there. It's just been gorgeous. We're having these wonderful moderate temperatures um, it's not too hot. It's just really beautiful, which I think has really helped with the flower seasons, you know? All right. So there's monochromatic where we use one color. And in this case, of course, shades and tones of that same color. So let's talk about another color palette, another uh, example of a color scheme that we might use. And that's going to be analogous. Analogous colors are colors that are neighbors on the color wheel. Um, so what we did in this case is we're choosing neighbors on the color wheel for analogous. So we're using this little kind of segment right here, which is the orange, yellow, green segment uh, of the color wheel. That's an analogous color scheme. And that, as you can see, is great fun. Thanks, Laura, great job on this design too. Love the little asymmetry of this. Um, I thought that was just so much fun. But we do even within this design have shades of yellow, shades of green. There's the Green Bells of Ireland. There's green Fujis down inside there tucking in, some green hydrangea. Um, two shades of orange in the roses and the Gerber daisies. So we have a, a, some variation even within that uh, sort of triad of colors that we've used that are neighbors on the color wheel analogous color scheme, okay? And then, to close out our conversation on color scheme for today, we're gonna look at complementary color schemes. And complementary are the ones that are, they are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. So in this case, we chose this kind of blue, purple, and yellow. And those two are gonna, I think you'll see, make a great color palette for an arrangement. And this design, great job again, Laura, who helped me out today. She just made kind of a beautiful, open, sort of gardeny, loose feeling arrangement with this. Um, there's some beautiful um, kind of forage foliages from the yard here as well, but larkspur, yellow roses, a couple of different, again, shades of yellow, some shades of purple, but keeping it very much within that two shades, the purples and the yellows. And again, a beautiful color combination, a great way to explore uh, color palettes. If you don't own a color wheel and you are interested in exploring colors more, these are really very inexpensive. Um, I'll be sure and put a link to this one um, in the comments. It came straight off Amazon. And um, it will actually help you because on the bottom of the color wheel, it shows how shades and colors are go from primary to the secondary colors, to the third level tertiary colors, and then how you can mix those colors. So it really is uh, quite a lot of fun and, and very interesting. Um, play with that some more as much as you play with flowers. And then, of course, reward yourself with some bourbon, because that's what we're gonna do now. So I was shopping at the local liquor store, and you know, just in looking for something that might be a little bit different, something that I knew that I hadn't tasted before, or it wasn't even a brand that I was familiar with. And I came across this, which is called Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. And it's actually from Waco, Texas, um, which of course makes me immediately think of Chip and Joanna Gaines. Um, and it's the distillery is the Balcones Distillery. And I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation of that, but um, 
At any rate, the blue corn is actually grown in the southwestern part of the United States, uh, so of course near Texas. Um, and blue corn is sweet, very much like its yellow and white counterparts are, but the blue varieties of corn do have sort of a nuttier and earthier kind of essence to their taste. So as it translates into bourbon, it should be kind of interesting. On their website, it says that they intentionally leave this as a youthful pour. Um, it is only aged for six months, so that could also impact the flavor we're about to, about to see. Um, I mean, in the bottle, the color's good. It's a little more golden, not quite as dark as what I typically like. Jason, for you, sir. So yeah, you can see that that's not quite um, as dark as what my typical preference is. Uh, it's a little more yellow. That is interesting. It's a little, obviously some vanilla. It's almost like butter. A little maybe cinnamon, like baking spices, that kind of thing that we sometimes get on the nose. Oh, that's really different. Let's go in for another one. <laughs> Let's go in for another one before we chat about it. So kind of sweet, definitely the sweet from the corn, kind of like brown sugar maybe, some fruit notes. There's a tiny little bit of heat. Uh, it's not crazy hot, like sometimes with the rye products that we've tasted, uh, but just a little bit of heat, which is, which is kind of nice. Not a very long finish, um, and it definitely finishes kind of in the back portion of my throat, back portion of my tongue, uh, which is typically where the hotter ones land for me. But um, overall, not a bad pour. So um, at any rate, and in full disclosure, I'll tell you that the liquor store was clearancing this, maybe because they hadn't had so many sales in it. So I don't know. Give it a try. See what you think. As always, it's been fun having you here. Uh, I'm so excited about that. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, I look forward to having you back for the next time when who knows what we'll be talking about and who knows what we'll be drinking, but it'll be fun for sure. And so until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks for joining us.